Tim Carter, AskTheBuilder.com. It's been almost three weeks since some substantial work has been done here on the job site. And as you can tell by my uh, clothes, they're making a big mistake. Fall is in the air. And pretty soon, we could have some snow. <laughs> Remember, this is not my job. I am not the builder. And if you discover something new in the video, consider clicking that thanks text link that's under the video and realize that any and all revenue that I receive from you, I put back into the channel uh, in getting new equipment or doing whatever I can to record more videos for you faster. Today I want to talk a little bit about getting the slab ready to pour the basement slab. Let's go take a look. If you remember, in some of the earlier videos, uh, there were big stacks of this two-inch thick closed cell foam insulation, and they installed it all yesterday. All right, so it's all down. I know you're getting blasted out by the sun, but it's all installed, and you can walk on it. I'm walking on it now. Pretty rigid, but I want to show you a couple of mistakes they made, in my opinion, all right? Number one, they did the right thing and they offset the seams. All right, so that's a smart thing to do. But look at these big cracks. See these big cracks between pieces? They're there. They're, they're, they're in a few locations. Um, but the problem is, the they did not put, if, if I was to lift this piece up, there's, they did not put a vapor retarder down in between, you know, underneath. There's no vapor retarder on top of the gravel. And so that means the radon is going to leak right through the gravel, come up through that crack. Yes, I know it might be filled a little bit with concrete, but what's going to happen is this concrete slab is going to get a crack in it, and radon can leak through that crack. All right. If they would put down an ASTM 1745 vapor retarder underneath all of this, um, that would pretty much block the radon from getting through and force it into the pipes to where it's eventually going to come up through this pipe here and <clears throat> go up to the roof. But now let's go talk about the bigger mistake. In an earlier video, I told you I pretty much figured they would have to do this. The carpenters were here yesterday. They put in four plates. The first three are treated lumber, and the top one is not treated. And that is basically the form for the concrete slab. So this concrete slab is going to be poured against this treated lumber all the way down. And the it's going to come up probably about halfway on the third one, because I'm guessing that the slab will be four inches thick. But it's a massive mistake. It's a huge mistake. All right, um, for a host of reasons. Because I had already talked about it in a previous video. Sorry, you're getting blasted out by the bright sunlight. <clears throat> but way over here, the drain tile, any water that comes up underneath this slab is going to go here. And they put a 90 on it. And there's a really good chance if we go over here, they may have finally extended it out you know, to the ground here, <clears throat> you know, coming out through this wall. I'd have to go down and see. But the point is, water can come up through that slab and get trapped behind those plates. That's going to be a problem. And then what it would do is see these cracks here in the uh, two by sixes? The water will leak through to get to the OSB that I'm sure is going to be on there and whatever siding and rot that out. It's a nightmare. It should have never been done this way. All right, so so they're going to pour this slab probably next week, I would think. I hope to be here, but there's no guarantees. You can see that those cracks in the foam are going to cause a big problem down the road. You may not think it's a big deal, but in the big scheme of things, it is a big deal. And it's really kind of a shame. Just make sure that when you pour a concrete slab, either indoors or outdoors, maybe you're pouring a slab for an outdoor shed, put a vapor retarder on the ground. Put a vapor retarder on the gravel, all right? And it will stop water vapor from the soil from coming up into the slab. 
and you want to make sure you use one that has an ASTM 1745 rating. Don't buy that crappy stuff from the home centers that's the translucent, uh, crappy 6 mil vapor barrier. It's got all kinds of pinholes in it. It's not cross-laminated. You want the cross-laminated ASTM 1745 vapor retarder. Simple as that. Got any questions? Guess what? I offer phone coaching, and I'm happy to help you over the phone. Look for the description of that in the video. And also, remember, if you found something helpful or discovered something new, think about clicking that thanks button underneath the video. Every single dollar that is raised there, I reinvest back into the channel. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter, AskTheBuilder.com. If you want to discover more home improvement tips, go to AskTheBuilder.com.